I'm going to start the meeting. Welcome everybody to this meeting of the uh, Economic Development Commission of Cuyahoga County. Uh, the first, uh, I think you all have an agenda. Uh, the first item on the agenda uh, is uh, our uh, board uh, elections, the officer elections, uh, so we can get started here. Um, uh, Joe, you have a... Yeah, push, the little button. push your button. I got that at my office too. I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to make sure we get this started off um, right. So I I would really like to move that we um, nominate you, the county executive, as our chair of the commission. Okay. Um, moving forward, I think that's the that's the right thing. But I'll wait second. for a second and then. Second. Seconded by Harriet Applegate. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I uh, uh, will take the vote. Uh, all those in favor of me for chairman, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we need to elect a vice chair now, and I, will, uh, I would like to nominate Jack Schron as the vice chair. Uh, Jack uh, is somebody I've gotten to know over the last, actually, couple years, uh, and uh, I'm very impressed with his knowledge and, and passion over economic development especially workforce. He uh, understands the issues that we need to uh, address here on workforce better than just about anybody. So I nominate Jack Schron for vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Drucker. All those in fa Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Passes. Thank Looking you very much. Hand. We have a vacancy. Uh, uh, and according to the charter, uh, the, this commission uh, fills the vacancy, and I'd like to do that at the next commission meeting uh, to nominate a business leader uh, to replace uh, Jay um, Mazelski. Um, so if anybody has nominations, uh, please forward them to either Nate Kelly, Jack Schron, or me, uh, or uh, you can just nominate them from the floor at the next commission meeting. But it would be helpful to get that in advance if you would uh, please do so. Um, I'd like to open a discussion here and make a few uh, initial remarks and then open it up for a discussion from the members of the commission. And by the way, I thank all of you for coming and serving on this commission. Uh, the, um, uh, there's been some amb ambiguity, uh, I understand, over the role of the Economic Development Commission uh, and its purpose, um, and so I'd like to have us address that today. Uh, the charter requires that this body meet and be composed of the region most impactful uh, influencers of economic development and economic growth. Uh, the city of Cleveland, the suburbs, uh, two members of the county, members from the port, the business community, the nonprofit sector, uh, and more uh, come together on this to influence our region's economic uh, progress. Individually, uh, those of us on this commission have been successful in our own rights, uh, but we can be more impactful if we are working together, all the different uh, uh, interest groups uh, uh, that are uh, involved in economic development. Uh, four years ago, uh, this commission uh, worked together for the first time. Uh, its focus was to, welcome, by the way, uh, its focus was to uh, help the county establish a new government uh, with economic development as a fundamental purpose in, of the county government. It's in the preamble of the county charter, actually, so it's a, it's a high priority for the new county government. Uh, members of this commission, uh, with support uh, from the county council, enable, enabled uh, the tools and resources for economic development activity from county government. Uh, the outputs of these programs have added jobs and supported development uh, that have given um, tremendous momentum, to use the words of Beth Mooney at the GCP annual meeting. Uh, despite the outputs, though, uh, the county and the region are still underperforming uh, what we can do. Uh, the challenge we need to address is to affect outcomes, uh, not just outputs. Uh, throughout the months preparing and holding this office, I've seen the numbers uh, Jobs Ohio, the Fund for Our Economic Future, raw data, and newspaper articles support information which we already know that we're just not meeting our potential yet. While we've, had, we've got momentum, we're not there yet. Uh, since the bottom of the 2009 recession, the state and the nation both have outpaced our region and Cuyahoga County in job growth. 
uh, assessing the job growth from the peak of the 2009 recession to the end of 2013, the number of jobs in Cuyahoga County increased 3.9% uh, to 716,000. Uh, but over the same period, jobs increased 6% in Ohio and 7% in the country. So we still have work to do. Um, Cuyahoga County's unemployment rate remains higher than the statewide average and higher than the many surrounding counties. And so uh, while the county and this commission have uh, done some very good things, the plan doesn't yet go far enough, uh, and we need to do more. Uh, throughout my first 100 days uh, in this office, I met with 100 business leaders, uh, actually more like 200, uh, and time and again, businesses told me what Jack and I talked about on the campaign, tra campaign trail, businesses want to hire, businesses have openings, uh, but they can't, in many cases, find people with the requisite qualifications uh, to fill the jobs that are out there. Uh, and so workforce uh, development has to be a key component of what we do in this region as well. We need to grow existing companies. We need to support uh, establishment of new companies. We need to attract new businesses to the Northeast Ohio region. And we need to be able to help fill uh, jobs uh, f that are open uh, now and into the future. Um, the theme, one of the key themes that I, I want to hit on is that you know th this commission, as I view it, is not necessarily to direct uh, county government economic development. Uh, uh, my administration is doing that. Jack heads up the Economic Development Committee of the council. Uh, and we certainly want to work with this commission. But I view this commission as uh, focusing on the economic development of the region, not just county government. It's bringing together. Uh, the port and the city of Cleveland and the AFL and the uh, GCP and uh, the, the, the Commission on Inclusion and all the different at, uh, interests that can, if we work together, I believe that this commission can really play a role in bringing together uh, and moving forward economic development for the county. And that's, that's where I am. Uh, so uh, in part, uh, the, uh, the economic development plan, the five-year plan that we presented to, to county council uh, the other day, and that's before you here, we've spoken, uh, we've met uh, with, uh, I believe, everybody on this commission, either, most of you in person, uh, some, uh, I think one by phone, but the rest in person. We've, we've talked to all of you. We've put your input into the economic development plan uh, that county council will be um, uh, reviewing. Uh, I'd like to see this commission really take on a much more active role, as I believe my understanding is that it started uh, as a much more active um, uh, commission. So I'd like to ask a few questions and, and get some input from you uh, right now. Uh, first question is, uh, what should the work of this commission be going forward? Uh, second question is, how is our meeting time best used? And third is, um, who should we hear from as a commission? I would like us to not only, I want to hear us, have us hear from the people who are on this commission. I want to hear what Joe has to say, and, and Mayor Drucker, and the mayors and managers, and, and uh, the, the port, and the city of Cleveland, and others. Uh, but I want to also, I think this commission can be useful in bringing in others that are not necessarily represented on the commission uh, to talk to us about uh, their views of economic development, uh, to talk to us about how we can move the county as a region forward. Uh, so if there are people that we should be bringing in, or organizations that we should be hearing from, I'd like to uh, get that from you as well. So let me start with your views on the work of the commission and what we should be doing going forward. And I'm going to take it upon myself to call on uh, uh, Vice Chair uh, Shran to talk to me a little bit because he's uh, indicated to me he has some ideas about it and has talked to me a little bit about it in the last weeks as well. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I, I too agree that I think we can be doing a more active role. I think that we should be more engaged. I know that Harriet and Will and uh, Joe, and I know, and Susan, and uh, we've, all, we've all spoken about this. Um, we want to roll up our sleeves. 
uh, I think there is a real value in and uh, maybe getting even some more voices uh, that might be might be resident on here uh, in and even in, in a more active role I don't know I know that we have uh, the number of assigned seats uh, based on the charter, but I don't know that there's a limitation on that, and so I don't know whether uh, a reading of the of uh, uh, as we all have the ability to do to to read most liberally uh, the document. So we have the ability to may perhaps read it and so it would say that should we have somebody that's uh, when we talk about workforce uh, from the education community that's actually sitting as part of uh, part of this? Uh, should we have? Some of the the uh, serious uh, level CEOs that are here in town. Uh, if I'm I'm here in my position as uh, as representative of county council at my charter, but if and I also am a CEO of, of uh, a mid-sized corporation. If I wasn't uh, in that role, we would we wouldn't have uh, but one uh, one person from industry right now, based on the way that the, the charter is written, and. Uh, so I would highly encourage us if we could get somebody from uh, seat level seats uh, in in regards to this uh, so they can bring it in because they have the ability to influence whether it's coming from the hospital industry or coming from the the manufacturing defense whatever all the things that are that are making up this this uh, culture of Northeast Ohio that are job influencers and we also know that uh, that we just passed uh, uh, the arts levy to put it on the ballot um, that is a a big economic driver of what we got, and uh, I don't hear their, their voice comes through, Joe, because some of them are members. But uh, uh, I think sometimes uh, it would be good to have those voice, voices come completely unfiltered. And I know that uh, uh, that eventually we're going to have a, a director of economic development uh, that will be in a, in a permanent status. Uh, is that can we run this more like a uh, like a board of directors uh, in in which you you actually are, are setting direction and, and tone uh, for where we want to go within within the county as a as a county broad base. Uh, so that's that's my input. I don't want to uh, take too much more of the microphone, but uh, I, I think that we could actually be running this more as one in which it takes active engagement on a quarterly basis, uh, as opposed to more one of which we respond to to uh, presentations and things like that. So um, my two cents on that. Thank you. Brian. First of all, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for reengaging this committee. Um, as Jack mentioned, we have had lots of conversations individually about, uh, in some cases, some frustration about what is the role of this committee and whether we're being useful. So um, I appreciate the comments that you made regarding um, job and job growth. I think we would all agree that that's the most important thing for our county, and the fact that we're lacking or lagging the state and the nation is important. Um, there are a number of efforts around town, and I would caution us as we try to bring more people to the table to have discussions that we also aren't just having discussions and that we're trying to connect our ability or influence or whatever it might be to those efforts that could close the gap. And I throw out as a suggestion, uh, we know the CEO of the schools has a time clock for uh, the goals that he has to reach, I throw out as a suggestion that we set a goal for the, de the number of jobs that are in demand in the county today and the supply and try to close the gap and that we measure how we're doing and we, those people that we're bringing to this table to have conversations that we're really bringing them to the table to see how are they impacting and what can we do to assist them in impacting closing that gap. If we have industry that's saying we have openings and we have people who are saying we're unemployed, then what do we do to close the gap? And I think it's if we could focus on that one simple thing, and I know that one simple thing involves many complex things, um, but there are just several rooms that I've sat in, and I know you guys have sat in more than me, where we're having these discussions and people are working on segments of it, and p potentially if we could focus all those segments on a single goal. Thank you. Other comments? Mayor. Um, just from um, being a liaison to mayors and managers, I think it's important that the county is not just Pressure. about, oh, sorry about that. that. Um, it's not just about um, uh, me bringing mayor's concerns to the county, but also the county utilizing the mayors of, of the entire county as a voice um, and to share um, not only 
our information, but our resources, because as um, you're hearing from the other members, the number one thing is, uh, is there are positions open and there are people that need jobs and there is, there's that lack of training, that technical skill, especially in um, certain cities with uh, manufacturing. That's where our, our main complaint from businesses is that they need employees. So um, I, do, I, I love that idea about setting a goal of how do we fill that gap. And to me, that's one of the, um, uh, that would be a, a huge goal to accomplish. Um, but but to, for the count, for this board too, to you start using the mayors and managers as a voice and a resource as well, um, not just having the mayors come and say, here's our issues, help us with those. Um, we want it to be a partnership uh, with the organization and the county. And just to respond, I was out at the mayors and managers this morning, so uh, speaking with them. Yes, hear it. Up on what Brian said, um, I think a big impediment to employment is there are lots and lots of employers who will not hire felons. This is a county, quite frankly, that's chock full of felons, ex-felons or ex-offenders, I guess is the correct per word. And I think that's a huge barrier to employment of the people who need employment the very, very most. We all have, uh, probably most of us have been to Edwins, but I think we all know about Edwins, but there need to be lots of other Edwins in this county. and. You know, we have to look at what what distinguishes this county. One of the things that distinguishes it, besides poverty, is that we have lots of ex-offenders pouring, you know, coming out of prison, and they're here, and it's very, very difficult for them to get jobs. And uh, I think that's a that's an area that we should take a look at. And and part of it is uh, helping employers understand. You know, some it's, it's maybe it's inappropriate for someone who's done time for robbery to work in a financial situation, but that's, you know, I think that, I think we could maybe assist employers, uh, you know, if somebody has a nonviolent drug crime uh, that probably shouldn't have gone to prison to start with, there's, there's lots of, there's lots of things that person can do, and unfortunately, I think those are the people that are falling into poverty and falling back into crime, quite honestly, so I think we really need to take a look at how we handle ex-offenders, in particular, how we talk to employers about uh, hiring offenders and what their policies are. Thank you. By the way, uh, before I, I should have mentioned that Nate Kelly is the acting uh, development director for the county and is staffing and taking notes of everything you're saying so that we'll have a record and can move forward. Will. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I uh, appreciate a chance to continue to work on this commission on behalf of the uh, um, Port Authority and um, <clears throat> appreciate you reconvening this group. Um, you, you answered a question that I was going to pose, which, which I was happy to hear you articulate, that you think our work is really about the, the broader economic development um, strategy and, and outcomes for the county, not so much directing your, your work um, within the county, within the county administration, but y you see this as, as a, a broader mission. And I don't know if that's exactly what the charter says, but uh, I was happy to hear you say that. I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, you posed three questions. W what is our work? I think that is our work, to, to look at the county and maybe even outside the county regionally in terms of uh, how do we drive, we put strategies in place that drive employment and investment and prosperity. Um, how do we use this time, and who do we invite in here? Um, I think uh, inviting in CEOs and hearing from them directly is a, is a good idea. I think we might want to think about some outside experts, and I know from time to time um, various organizations invite um, experts from Harvard or uh, other organizations in, and I think that might be worthwhile for us. Um, there may be some case studies we can look at. Uh, as well, and you know, as you hire a, uh, um, your permanent economic development person for the county, I'm sure we can work with the, the staff to set that up. But uh, and you and I have had, uh, and, and Chris Rone and our board chair have talked about um, looking at transportation, distribution, and logistics, and uh, as a cluster in our in our county and in our region, and how do we le further leverage um, our strengths uh, in in that uh, realm. And I look forward to wor working with you on that. I think we need a, a, a cluster strategy in, in, in that arena, and the Port Authority would be happy to provide some leadership and resources in that regard. 
I uh, just saw Chris Ronane last night, as a matter of fact, and was telling me about the, what looks like it's going to be a very successful edition of that second uh, uh, European line uh, for, um, uh, for freight transportation, which is really significant. I appreciate what you guys are doing there. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Joe? Um, one sort of big picture sort of suggestion, and then just a specific. Um, you know, we're the closest thing to having a real regional government as we're going to get in Ohio for the next X number of years. And I really think a filter, and we won't answer it today, but I really think a filter for our work should be what can we do that nobody else can? It, you know, it, because we, we have an ability as a council, as a government, as a county council, as a county executive, and then all the connections we all have to focus on a few things where, you know, coordinating the works of others, uh, helping the works of others in such a way that we get a bigger, as I think you said, outcome rather than output, I think is something that, that we have a legitimate uh, place to play. So if somebody else is doing it, can do it, ought to do it, maybe we can help in those regards. But I think if we tried to focus you know, on an 80-20 basis, 80% 80 of our activities on things that nobody else can do, and maybe, and maybe be... You know, I don't. I don't see, and it goes back to Will's comment and your opening comment. I don't. I don't think this council needs to operate things, but if it can help change things so that in a year or two they're on their own and they're doing even better and their outcomes are even greater, you know, so be it. And I would put under there, for example, the whole issue of workforce. I mean, we can't. We cannot poll our members on any issue including recently, you know, tax reform as proposed in the state budgets without realizing that, well, those issues are all important, but at the end of the day, and, and we, I think the county, we know there's a lot of stuff going on in workforce. It's a big issue for us right now, but I do think the role of trying to figure out how to, how to get greater scale is something that, a role that the county could play and that perhaps nobody else could. So I just I just think that's an important filter. Second comment would be, I did like in the plan, and we're doubling down on this also. You know, if we help existing people, existing employers in Cuyahoga County grow, attraction will take care of itself. And so that that greater focus on and that's what we're doing at GCP now as well, that greater focus on helping the people who already have capital at risk in our county and helping them invest even more capital in our county, uh, we at least think for this period of time in the county is the biggest bang for our buck. And obviously, as you do that, companies that might be looking at coming to Cuyahoga County see that value also. But just again, in terms of where perhaps an emphasis could be, and I, I think that's what the port is doing. I'm, I'm, I, think if, I think if the liner service bears out the way it's starting to show, that can attract companies here. But right now, it's, it's going to be mainly promoted by the people who are already here and seeing it as a, as a value add. So just a suggestion. Do things nobody else is in a position to do, and I do think from a development standpoint, focus on the people that are already here. Um, before I get to Jack, I just want to follow up on, uh, so the Greater Cleveland Partnership obviously itself is a major economic development uh, engine, uh, and we have other engines that, or organizations or commissions or whatever you want to call them, that GCP has been key with, like the Rex project and uh, Team NEO's position. How... Would you think, what's your view on how this commission can interrelate, should be interrelating with those other efforts? Well, I think, I, sorry, I think we have to be, but I, I think a lot of us at the table already are, and we can be that conduit. Um, I think what we need to, what we need as a commission to be doing is inputting to those strategies what we need. Um, and if that, you know, I don't, I don't think we need necessarily a session on this, but I do think we can work with Nate to make sure everybody on the commission understands what those 
current efforts at Rex and Team Neo, and they're really the same thing. The Rex strategy was part of our work with Team Neo. And as we all know, Team Neo is, is being revamped, and it's a good time to make those connections. But I, I think um, our input to what we need from Team Neo and Jobs Ohio, I think, is going to be critical. Jack. Yeah, I think, uh, again, uh, repeating or echoing on a little bit of what we're talking about here, as far as the, the opportunity to be a regional strength and have a regional impact is, is something that we, we, we clearly are being looked upon or looked at by the other 87 counties. Uh, they're, they're watching our model, seeing, uh, and I know all of us who were early adopters and got into it said, we think this could be the standard to which the other, other counties uh, would, would follow if we do it right. And, um, and the, the concept of clusters, uh, I don't want to sound simplistic, but we know that one of our strengths is medical. We know that one of our strengths is manufacturing. And uh, clearly, uh, the arts and, and theater and are, is, is a third area that uh, if, we, if we look at how every one of these groups touches, at some point, one of those three clusters and, and not try to, because we're not going to be the Silicon Valley. Some, some other state, I think, got that before us. Uh, and so we're, we're not going to win that one. Uh, we're not going to win the research triangle. We're going to be doing research and, uh, and IT as it fits into medical. We're not going to be the R&D. Uh, we're not going to be the IT, but we're going to see how it fits into uh, the manufacturing community. And we're going to do the same thing within the arts. And you know, we're now being held up uh, on a national basis for all three of those elements. Let's build on those strengths. Let's, let's, let's do that and see how it fits. And then getting back to the questions like Brian Hall said, how do we do a subset under each one of those three things? What did we do and how do we engage every one of these groups, the mayors and managers, for ex-offenders? How do you engage that? Because you've got medical, manufacturing, and entertainment in each one of these. And labor has got to touch. Okay, how do you, if we set a goal, how do you, if, 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 if reducing the unemployment population with the ex-offenders, let's make a statement, because I know that Joe's got people that are doing ex-offender uh, examples. We've got it at our own company. We, we make that a concerted effort. So if we hold that up and we actually we show people that this group is, is, is identified the clusters and subsets within setting goals, the workforce education uh, and development, if we set that up as, 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 again, subset, how do we touch within those three clusters? And then the last one is uh, what the ultimate outcome is, what jobs do we actually create? And, and I think if we, if we start with the macro of regional and we start with our three areas that we are strong on right now, uh, that uh, there's nobody stronger in medical, there's nobody stronger in manufacturing uh, and making stuff and the buildings and instruction, that's all an outcome as a result of those successes. And, uh, and the last one is we just might as well tell the world we're, we're the best in entertainment uh, other than that New York thing up there, but why not claim it and, and actually make that a statement because it touches labor, it touches uh, development touches education, and I think that if we, uh, the subsets of specifics, how do we do against ex-offenders, if that's one of the things we're going to say, how do we do against the training and workforce to support those three, and, and to go back to Susan, uh, she says, you know, she's got 58, uh, uh, 59 mayors and managers and associations that are uh, in some way involved in that through our 59 communities, what can they do to actually touch ex-offenders, because I'd be willing to bet they don't really have that as a goal in your own, own area. And if it becomes a goal, then we, we should be able to go back and, and ask them. And if we say that workforce training education, we have the right to go back and, and, and say, okay, this is what we did, and then ultimately set a jobs goal uh, percentage. And, and I think that whatever you, it's, it's the old adage in business, whatever you measure, you perform to. If you don't measure it, it's never going to get performed to. So we actually set that we want to have 10%, 20% of our companies that are hiring ex-offenders in some way, shape, or form, and or whatever the, whatever the, the number is to, to, to try that, because once they try it, they're going to find we've got an ex-offender at our company, and he's blowing the doors off uh, because he's working his tail off because uh, he knows that he is not doing it for himself. He's actually doing it for the next hire uh, that we'll be bringing on board. Harriet. Yeah. Um, I, I <coughs> for being, uh, having <laughs> some uh, disparate remarks, but I, I want to uh, comment on a few things. 
uh, being from the FLC, of course, my emphasis on, is on workforce, whoops, sorry, workforce and workforce development. And I, I think I would be remiss not to mention that uh, our WIB has a fabulous record through, used to be Employment Connection, now it's Ohio means jobs. Uh, the names keep switching. Um, but they have a really outstanding record of actually placing people into jobs. In fact, I think they are probably leading the nation. And that's, an, you know, going to uh, Joe's comment about let's not do something, you know, that somebody else is already doing. I think just making sure, helping employers learn about that service. They do a lot for employers. They do it very well. And uh, I, I think that could, you know, not enough employers know that that service is not only there, but it, very successful. And I think their retention rates are also very, very high. I know their placement rates are, they blow the doors off uh, the rest of the state and, and actually have been asked by people uh, as far away as Maine and California to come and, you know, tell the secret. Uh, so, so that's a resource we have. And I think, again, it goes back to workforce development. We have to make sure that our workforce is able to get these jobs and keep them. So uh, I think uh, I just wanted to kind of remind us that, you know, we do have an agency that has a very good record of placement. But, you know, we really do need to work on our workforce uh, uh, to get them to uh, into uh, that kind of shape. The other thing, uh, I like the, the clusters notion. I think that's a really good way to organize our thinking around this. But I also, maybe there's another level of maybe like themes um, that we want to integrate into that. Because, of course, uh, um, we have Lake Erie and we have the port. And water is an increasingly important issue. And, it, you know, I think all of us kind of have this feeling that we have this renaissance going on right now. But in 10 years or 20 years, everybody in the nation is going to envy us because we have this wonderful resource in water. And um, this is the year of water, the, the city, you know, sustainability year of water. And, and so I think maybe a theme that we weave through this, and especially when we think about the future, has to involve you know, this terrific asset that we have, which is water. And uh, I think the port is is done more than step up to kind of bring that to the fore, the importance of water for transportation and, in, and manufacturing and industry import-export. That's critical. Um, the other theme uh, kind of associated with water would be sustainability. And, um, you know, uh, you're right, Jack, we can't be a Silicon, Silicon Valley. We can't be these other things. But... What we could be is a, a, a region that, that really is a trailblazer in the sustainability um, sort of a, a around that theme. And, and we've got arts and culture, which makes us sustainable. We have the, the water, the port. You know, we have this notion of, you know, the mayor's not here, but, you know, his sustainability 2019 uh, project is pretty big. And it, it, it covers a lot of people, and, it, and it, we can, if we could tweak that somewhat and make it more jobs-oriented and uh, th think of ourselves, you know, as a place where, you know, we're going to lead through sustainability, through our water resource, you know, those are, uh, and feed that into our cluster concept, because I think the cluster concept is really important as well. And, and these don't exactly fit into clusters, but they might be themes or things that we... Or prior, or I'm not sure how, how we want to put that, but, but if we interweave that into the cluster concept, I think that would be helpful. Great. Uh, Mayor. Uh, what, I, what I keep hearing is about the workforce development, and, and it goes back to what Jack first said about, I think it would be imperative to bring someone from the educational institutions here, because what we're lacking is that training, whether it's for ex-offenders or, or the kids coming uh, that are in high school, maybe not going to college. Years ago, we used to have all these vocational opportunities that would train for the manufacturing and, and the um, everything, all the machinery uh, to be able to work that. And companies, I think, are left on their own for their own training. And we've lost that gap because then we did a shift where everyone then was going to college. It, that technical skill was kind of pushed to the bottom. And, but you do see a resurgence of, of manufacturing. And so I think that would help not only a program for, um, to add on to, uh, for the ex-offenders, but also those uh, people coming out of school where maybe college isn't um, their forte. So, uh, but they need another avenue. Because if, if we don't offer that training, then those jobs still go unfilled. So I, it might um, be, it, it would be beneficial to get 
some of these educational institutions more involved to say what programming can we either assist them with or um, what can we help to set that up to lead to the training to lead to filling the jobs. And just so, uh, I think that's a, I mean, these are all good points. Um, uh, the training is a critical piece. We're, we as a county are spending a lot of money on workforce training. I'm not sure, I mean, if you look at the results, the outputs, um, the outcomes rather, you know, it's, we're not there yet, obviously. We have a long way to go. The, the WIB board, for example, uh, the numbers are very strong on placement. Mm -hmm. They do very little in terms of numbers on training. There's almost no training being done through the WIB board. So um, it, it, it is a gap, uh, an important gap that we need to figure out how to fill. Let me just ask uh, before I, I allotted so much time for this discussion, we're almost there, but uh, does anybody have any suggestions on how uh, these meetings would be most effective, best used for all of your time? Will? Um, <clears throat> I'll try to answer that, but I just wanted to add a little bit to the last discussion, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, please. Um, uh, you know, I may be sort of too simplistic about this, but I do think we, we need to figure out what the goals are and, and the right metrics and agree on those and, and get some input from staff and others on those because then we can measure. And four years from now, we can we can look back and we can say, how did we do? And then we need to figure out if these are the, the numbers we're trying to move, how do we do it? I think Joe makes a great point that there, there's a lot of good work underway and we don't want to duplicate it. We, we, we want to assess it, I think. I think we want to look at what's happening is we're already starting to do today. Where are we effective already and where do we need to be more effective and where are the gaps? Um, what levers can we pull? Where, you know, where can we improve workforce development? You know, where can we make our transportation network stronger? Where, you know, where do we grow the clusters that, how do we grow the clusters that we already have some, some competitive advantages with? Um, and, and then just you know put put those strategies in, in place and I think Joe makes another good point that if it means we go to team neo or we go to some other organization and say listen we've got a suggestion then great I'm sure they'll be um, receptive um, so I think as I think about these meetings um, I mean, I'd like to come back next time and, and let's get some data Let, let's look at some you've already uh, mr. chairman started to uh, give us some data I'm sort of a data-driven person it, Let's understand where we are in a, um, you know, objective way, and, and then agree. Uh, this is what we're trying to achieve. It starts with looking at those numbers, and then we can roll into, all right, how are we going to get there? So I, I just sort of see a, um, a facilitated uh, use of our time here, where there's some homework. We have to do some reading. Staff and others are producing some material for us, uh, and then we're coming in here and we're. We're having some discussion and making some decisions. Great. And speaking of data, it's a good segue. We, um, I'd like to and ask at this point uh, Nate Kelly uh, to come forward. Um, uh, we did uh, prepare our five-year economic development plan update, um, and I'd like to ask uh, Nate to give us an overview of that, uh, and there is uh, uh, some data in there that should be helpful as well. Mr. Chair, could I just make one? Oh, you, yeah, you asked Joe, the please. question about yeah, yeah, yeah. making just one suggestion to think about, and that is there's so many things that are critical. I think I think we'd be better off erring on the, on the side of let's deal with one big issue every time we get together and and not try to have... Ten different issues that we're talking about because we won't we won't get into it enough to help your staff or any of us figure out what next steps are. So I would just say let's try to figure out you know one major agenda item for each session, and then you know do our business around that whatever that may need to be. Just a suggestion. Good suggestion. Could I make a, a similar yes, sure. comment? Brian, as, yeah. as we all made our comments, I think we agreed almost unanimously on a number of things. But the overriding thing in terms of how we use our time, to the point you just made, Joe, I just think we have to pick a, a topic. And I think it's workforce at a very high level, and I think the metric is at a high level, and that everything that we talked about underneath that, there are organizations or collaborations of organizations in this community 
working on, and we use the term we as in what can we do, but after we leave this meeting, there's not much that we as a group do. So the only thing I think, I won't say the only thing, one of the things I think we can do is set that North Star for the objective around something and coalesce all those efforts around that and then have this meeting be the place where we're measuring and marking and hopefully garnering and nudging resources towards the things that are working. That's good. Thank you. Nate. Thank you, boss. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, Nate Kelly, I'm the Interim Director of Development, and I've had the pleasure of working with all of you for a handful of years now. It is such a pleasure to be here to talk about um, uh, what we're doing in economic development at the county and what we're doing in the future together as a commission, and I look forward to continuing to uh, provide whatever work I can to advance um, our work. Today's presentation will be more largely focused on the actions of the county, which is a little bit in contrast to the rest of the conversation that we've had today. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time very briefly looking at the past four years that um, uh, this commission was instrumental in helping to structure, but also you've seen this presentation or versions of it a few times, so um, I'm, I'm not going to kill you with it. And then I want to talk about how we tried to pivot the strategy of the county to reflect some of the outbound work of the commission. And then I'll follow that up with um, what I think is a quick digestion of the commission's feedback from the last agenda item and give a preview to make sure that I have the right direction um, from the consensus of this group to staff you for the next meeting. Um, to begin, four years ago, the county's role in economic development uh, started in earnest when, after the charter was passed, finally, economic development became an actual legitimate and fundamental governmental purpose for Cuyahoga County that made us distinct in many ways in Ohio and across the nation, not just by having a charter, but unique in the county that we had uh, economic development in the actual preamble of why we are to exist. And that growth is so important um, for businesses and for educational purposes and for all of our constituents. And so that mission reflects that. And the work of the last four years was hard work to set up the processes in place and get the tools and resources available so that the county could have a legitimate role in economic development. And I think that we have that role. You'll see this mishmash of resources and tools that we have. Um, we're clearly missing some graphic design talent at the county, um, <laughs> but that's why we have uh, the opportunity to endeavor for better. Um, but what you'll see principally are that we have a centering point at the county for all of the, the, the resources around economic development. We spoke, or the commission spoke a lot already about how there are activities underway, there are organizations pushing their agenda, uh, and we try to carve out a role where the county is not a leader, but encouraging that work, leading where appropriate, and adding capacity to those successful efforts that are already underway. And so that's what those past few years have been about, that it has been more about the transaction, about the nuts and bolts, of creating the mechanisms so that we can be nimble um, when it comes to economic development. And so um, the focus has been largely on lending and providing incentives for transactions. Um, we try our best to make sure that, just like Joe has to do with um, uh, new market tax credits, and just like Mayor Drucker has to do with uh, the precious incentives that they offer in Solon, we want to make sure that the incentives that we're providing at the county level are what we call the but for. But for our incentive, this action would not have taken place. So that is difficult. Um, but we have done a couple things to try to um, streamline it, make sure the re resources are available. And an important thing that we're, we're trying to encourage, broadly speaking, 
the kinds of jobs that are, well, first living wage jobs, but jobs that are additive uh, to our economy. We try to leverage as best we can from uh, the private sector, and we also have, have made a clear priority in identifying brown, brownfield sites, redeveloping those sites, and getting them ready for development in the future. And so there have been good outputs. Uh, it is um, significant that there are nearly 4,000 jobs created because of these kinds of transactions, significant private investment. Now, by the way, the investment in the region has been huge from the private sector and the public sector. Um, at the GCP annual meeting, it was a, it's been, even with, with a long tail, the past few years of $5 billion of infrastructure investment over the past couple of years. Um, and so this, this is significant. But um, these are the outputs. And we would agree that the outcomes are still wanting. So we have the machinery in place for the county to be an active participant in economic development. That is the fundamental takeaway from the last four years' worth of work. We have to improve in many realms, and we've made mistakes. Um, I'm not going to tell you all of them, but um, I'm aware of many. And we have the opportunity to pivot and, and improve. And so that's why this uh, five-year plan, this fifth year of the five-year plan, seeks to pivot from outputs to outcomes. So we'll talk a little bit about that distinction, some priorities, um, how we don't expect to go it alone, a conversation I think we've had pretty well today. We're going to talk about the pivot. Now, when I was thinking about this presentation, I had the calves much more on my mind, and I thought this would be hilarious. <laughs> and now I'm looking at it, and I'm it's thinking, I mean, it's, it is, we're making a pivot. And we may have to make that pivot from uh, 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 outputs to outcomes. So without repeating the county executive, we know that we have not been meeting our potential. And so a quick picture will demonstrate that, which is we see in 2009, the Cleveland MSA, which is not limited to the county, but we impact our region greater than any other participant in the region. And we are of the region. Um, I want folks in Cuyahoga County to be working in Cuyahoga County, but it doesn't hurt my feelings if they're at Steris. Um, and our labor, which is not in the county, and our labor shed is much larger than just the county. Um, but that's why this is so significant. At the peak of the recession, the Cleveland MSA was leading the state and besting the nation in our unemployment rates. And yet, as the recovery took hold, while we see the end result is better than it was during the recession, we've been beat by the folks that we're measuring ourselves against before. There are a lot of tremendous opportunities that, that Councilman Schroden mentioned and successes. 8,000 jobs added in leisure and hospitality alone over the past year in Cuyahoga County. Manufacturing, very strong. Um, uh, construction has added more jobs than in years past. Um, but the pivot is something that is very important when we talk about the priorities of um, how we take our next approach. Uh, Councilman Schrand said something when we're talking about what we measure. And he said something, he said, we need to measure what are the jobs that we are creating? He didn't say, how many jobs are we creating? We were focused before on how many jobs are we creating. But the what jobs are we creating is how we can make that difference. And that's why we want to focus our strategies, uh, uh, the tools, to be, which are the right tools that need to be sharpened, improved, um, and then a couple added strategically to address these priorities. Firstly, job growth and opportunity. 
um, almost everybody at, on the dais said in one way or another that we need to build on our base, whether it's helping expanding those businesses that are already in place or leveraging the resources that we have, like water, um, the arts, and others, because if we are um, chasing after business, um, it is a less efficient approach than growing the business here, which will attract additional business. Fairness and equity has to be fundamental to all of that job growth and activity work. Um, not only, and we can do that in kind of a selfish way, because we have so many folks that with fairness and equity as a priority for how we advance our development, then we're putting folks to work that are of a reentry class, mm -hmm. that are of an entrepreneurial class. Um, we also overlook, I think sometimes, the notion of sustainability as a priority within um, fairness and equity. Sustainable growth, um, redeveloping those properties that are environmentally unsound or emphasizing properties that are emphasizing growth that is closer in rather than farther out as a sustainable approach um, is good for us economically. It's also the right thing to do. And um, Councilman Schron references oftentimes you know, the, choosing a site location for his company. He redeveloped a brownfield, but he also chose a place that was accessible for transportation and his workforce. And the more that we grow away from those things, the harder it is for us to afford to maintain that infrastructure, but also it's harder for the folks that need to work to get to work. Um, and that's why those things are so important in fairness and equity. And then lastly, it was said again and again, we have to be a government that gets results. We have to be accountable, transparent, and fully engaged. And a lot of our conversation today has already captured those things. One of the things that the county executive reminds us of um, in every opportunity is, he speaks about no wrong doors. Um, here, I've described it as an agency agnostic approach. Regularly, for the first time, I'm working with my colleagues in Health and Human Services on economic development activity. It's, I think, some of the hardest policy development work that I've participated in because we have to connect a supply of folks that are willing to work, that have been getting services provided to them without the objective, which is employment. I think it was Reagan, Reagan that said, a job is the best social service that we can provide. I think I butchered the quote, but the gist is there, right? Um, so working within our own, our own frameworks, our own departments, um, is fundamental to what we're doing in health and human services. Workforce was talked about at great length. Um, and then we want to make sure that we're plugging into the work and the direction and the priorities of the Economic Development Commission because what we can impact at the county is significant, but not as significant as what uh, the leaders of the economic development partners that are at this dais and the ones that we have reached to throughout the region, even outside the county, uh, like uh, uh, Will said, are so important. So a lot of that is language. I want to talk about some of the tools that we proposed to county council. This is going to be a planful year, taking the tools that we have and uh, reflecting what the commission has already said to us today about setting a goal, measuring it, and uh, achieving it is an effort to start to measure what jobs we are creating. A focus that has been, uh, um, uh, a particular focus has been in innovation. And so the county executive has proposed and we'll be working with council over the next many months to emphasize some new programs around innovation and encouraging entrepreneurship. But we do it in a way where we're partnering with folks that are 
subject matter experts, instead of us creating and managing and administering a program at, at a government that can be um, have a different ethos about how we make our investment decisions, we've released three RFPs to identify partners where we can help add capacity to those partners, which will help add capacity to the investment investments that are being made in entrepreneurship, startup, early growth businesses, and having it done so by folks that are experts, bringing in subject matter experts. Um, the, the other space that we will emphasize is um, that, that is new is around competitiveness. Um, one of the refrains of the 100 business leaders with whom the county executive met, um, and Mr. County Executive, I think it was 167 that we met when we stopped counting, um, and it kept going. Well, and it is so probably pretty close to 200. There were two refrains that were shared in every meeting by every leader. One was workforce development, not specifically addressed right here. The second was in access to government, having uh, unity, predictability, and making sure that we're providing excellent customer service to our businesses. The same way that we do try to focus on our clients. A lot of the, the interaction that we have with businesses, particularly at municipal levels, is punitive. You know, get a permit, you didn't get a permit, here's a ticket, et cetera. But also, we miss the opportunity to engage more effectively in advocacy. And um, hearing what businesses need and being able to take that to the state and among our colleagues so that there's consistency. Um, and then also very significantly, when we get a call from a business, regardless of where, it, whatever door it comes in uh, here at the county, we need to make sure that we help to direct traffic, whether it's to a civic partner or to make sure that they understand the process and the framework that we operate in. Um, an example is we get calls unsolicited for a business incentive. Depending on the business, we work with Greater Cleveland Partnership to make sure that there's a connection. Sometimes if it's very large, we talk to Team NEO and Jobs Ohio. But expecting a business to be able to navigate that uh, labyrinth on their own and to become experts in government, in addition to being an expert in their business, is an unrealistic expectation if we're supposed to be helping businesses to grow. Um, another example, and because I made eye contact with Harriet, um, our businesses like um, some of the labor unions that are seeking to make investments in the physical development with their own pension funds to help growth and help their members all at the same time. And we can help bridge that divide. And those are the sorts of things that we can do through an ombudsman office um, and activity that we're going to add this year. Also significantly is we added a vertical to make it very clear that place is important around how we're making investments. Part of this is um, plumbing and how we deal with our colleagues on county council and deal with members of the public and our mayors. We have a number of programs that revitalize areas to get them ready for growth. Storefront renovation programs are one of the uh, favored programs, particularly of first string <coughs> suburbs, to help uh, clean up their, the equivalent of their main streets. Our municipal grant programs to help get certain streets get repaved, build the infrastructure to support a lot of things that cities can't afford. Cuts in local government funds have been very challenging. The way that we can help our cities be more efficient. Um, and then, of course, the county executive has made a priority of housing. Workers can't work if they don't have a good environment in which to live. It also helps with business attraction and quality of life matters. So already there is um, a person that is in charge of our housing policy development that reports directly to the county executive. That's a first time. 
we're building a housing plan that is informed by a housing data that was supported, funded by county council. And so these are the things that are already underway and getting proposed. Um, another thing is sustainability. We have a Department of Sustainability with whom I work very closely so that we're making uh, a program where they make sustainable investments that encourage sustainable development, which is a fairness and equity piece, but also provides an incentive for good decision making around uh, rehab and new construction. So those are the things that we look forward to implementing that are the tools, but it's still going to be a very planful year. None of what we've proposed yet gets to the question of what jobs are we creating? And so it's gonna take us some time to make that pivot. It's gonna take us good input from our county council and from our economic development commission. And so that's why we take these action steps in the plan. First and foremost is to refocus and engage the economic development commission. We've had that conversation today. I'm gonna to recap what I think my homework is. The second is to align the investments. These are what we call our, our investment tools um, with the county priorities, which were at the front of the meeting or front of the presentation. Um, but those things that we'll also have to align with the kind of metrics that we talked about developing with the commission. And then lastly is the emphasis on uh, place, quality of life issues, a housing plan, which addresses many things that impact uh, our ability to grow, attract top talent, retain top talent, et cetera. That is the summary of the economic development plan. It is a very planful year where we'll have to start to sharpen, set the goals. And what I'd like to be able to do, Mr. Chair, is to, to ask for input now and then transition to what I think the homework is that I've received from the commission before our next meeting. Thank you, Nathan. Does anybody have any questions or input, comments? Mr. Schron. Thanks. Uh, uh, Nate, in, our, in the plan you presented to this council uh, commission before, there was a major component in it uh, that was never, I don't believe, worked through because I know it was one of the toughest ones, uh, and, I don't, and I see it now actually being, being missing. We said we don't want to duplicate what's going on out there in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the county right now, um, but the flip side of that is that we had uh, said that we wanted to convene a way to bring these groups together uh, instead of having 600 organizations that all have the word economic development in it. It was written into our last five-year plan that we... We have this, this small window of time uh, to hold ourselves out as the regional uh, collaborator to try to, to try to make a difference. Uh, and because we are, we're, the, we're the first one, we're, we're a new, new organization, uh, that we were going to take that on that role uh, and bring organizations together to do that. We, we, have, we now have a, a, a very uh, short window where we're going to see this actually taking place. Uh, from now until November because the arts community will, will never circle their wagons any tighter than what they're going to circle uh, for from now until the, uh, till the, the election on, uh, for the arts and cultural level that uh, I assume it's going to get signed in. Uh, it's already signed uh, Okay, I didn't know uh, that, that was passed out of council and now signed in uh, that it's going to be on the ballot. So we have this, this rare opportunity to, to see, and if you look at the charters of most of those arts organizations, they will have a component that says economic development in their, um, in their charter. And it just seems to me that we have this, this chance uh, to be the bully pulpit uh, to actually talk about that. We, we saw that uh, Team NEO has merged together. There's serious conversations with, within WireNet and Magnet taking place. They never work any closer together than the way they currently are. I'll bet if we start going through that and actually we're to take on that role, I know that... Uh, uh, your predecessor, that was one he kept saying, yeah, he wants to do it, but it's, it's like putting your, putting your foot in the third rail of the, of the, uh, of the power lines that, you know, that's, that's pretty dangerous because you are suggesting that maybe they have to all play nice in the sandbox. Uh, but 
we do hold, we have a role because you talk about we've got one of the one of the all important roles, which is the funding. Uh, and I know that sitting on both Magnets Board and WireNets Board I, that I sit on, uh, they they pay a real close attention to all the other funders that are out there. And, and they're listening to it. So, because uh, they are now, they steer their business plans, they steer their objectives. Wouldn't this be uh, a way in which we could actually bring that back in and actually do something? It's, it's going to be a tough role. Uh, and it's, it's going to require the county executive to, to probably be the facilitator to make that happen. But uh, if 600 organizations are now uh, down to, who knows? 30, 40, uh, where they're all working on a common objective, would that be a better way to go? So I see it missing. Question why it's not not in there. I know it's a tough, it's to be the convener of, of that uh, consolidated conversation. It's, it's a tough one. Um, I, I'll, I didn't realize it wasn't in there, but I think that's a great idea. Um. Well, I, I, we, we, we as a council kept raising it. We, we asked that number number of times throughout our first two or three years. And I, and I knew it was it, it's not an easy thing to do to bring it. But right now, we know that we can do it around one of the three clusters uh, because we could actually play a role with probably the arts because we, we as a council have done it. I know the GCP just endorsed it. Uh, the levy, I assume that the mayors and managers are going to be endorsing it. I'm sure that every group up here is going to be doing it. So what can we do to say, hey, how do we drive that economic engine within the arts community uh, to create jobs, set measurements, set goals, hire people within the ex-offenders, uh, be, be able to make that public statement of sustainability, all that as we go forward for these next five months as this campaign rolls out. I, I see a signal from uh, my boss that says, yep, we'll do that. So it's going to be difficult for me to say the following, <laughs> which is, I hear you, and I'd like to be able to include it, but I'd like to be able to include it in a way that gives the Economic Development Commission some of that um, effort. Here's why. If the county pursues an initiative around um, any, anything on its own, then it is something that is of the county, and its impact is lessened than if it's duplicated or shared with others. So, um, you know, I think of the of Mayor Jackson's effort on sustainability, and it had you know, one one tangible example was an emphasis on uh, bike lane creation within the city. But if the county did it, and the county planning commission did it, and the mayors and managers association took that same approach to something as simple and tangible as bike lanes, we'd have a much greater impact around biking. And so the influence that we have on these organizations, which the county provides significant funding, I think is duplicated by uh, the other entities that also impact them and sometimes compete with them. Um, so if I could manifest that as a goal around engaging the Economic Development Commission, um, I'd like to be able to do that. Joe. Um could you go back to the slide with the verticals, if you can? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on here. They, I think there's one analysis we should do for ourselves also, which gets a little bit to Jack and the county executive's points. Um, I, think we, I think we need to do an asset portfolio assessment. I actually think the county has greater influence in a lot of these things, and perhaps we all fully understand. Let me give you a couple examples. Um, county, has an air, county has an airport. Um, county is, at the end of the day, the father of our Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, similarly, RTA, and we know that the future of getting people to jobs is somewhat dependent on how our RTA functions, and they do a great job. They get, but how we better connect them to some of these things? We just talked about arts and culture in a number of ways. So I think, you know, we're sitting in a building that was really the result of the previous administration and council's efforts to say, how can we better utilize our physical assets? But I think the county touches on a number of other economic development 
related entities that could help drive the outcomes. And I think it'd be it'd be helpful for us as a council to just sort of get that inventory together. The port's a perfect example, but the, we've already talked about what the port's doing in this area right now that's that's in a leadership way. So I just I just think there's other tools and resources we have that because they've been operating to some degree uh, independently, uh, we don't realize how much they could be helping some of these other things. I just, I just, it's, it's not to be critical. It's to understand where our other tools lie. And I'll, I'll use the, you know, the, the air service issue in this region is as important to all of this stuff, retention, expansion, and attraction clusters as we can get. And the county's a player in that. But I don't, I don't recall in the previous years that, for instance, we've even discussed that issue. We sort of put it in the it's, it's only a Cleveland issue because of Hopkins. And, of course, it's a major Cleveland issue. But it's also a major county issue. I think uh, if I might just comment, those are all good points. Um, we have, you mentioned RTA, integral to economic development, the port integral to economic development, and so much more that I and Nate have started looking at, but again, we, need, we can do this in a much more uh, comprehensive fashion. So for example, NOACA is a key piece of economic development, where we, how we draw funds for our uh, transportation highways, et cetera. Um, I believe that one of the best uh, economic development engines can be uh, the sewer district. They're going to be investing three billion dollars in uh, in this region, and uh, we can. Uh, I've had conversations with Chach about uh, workforce and in integrating workforce development training programs into the work that they're doing. So I agree 100% with your point that. Um, uh, a comprehensive view, including our partners, uh, or, or should be partners, you know, is a, is a valuable uh, exercise. Make sure we're, that'd be great. Thanks. I have one small comment, actually. Um, uh, in progressive policy circles, the, the term high road economic development, high road as it applies to the conduct of, of uh, business is, is often high road, low road, that contrast is often made. And I think it might be useful because I think, you know, what, what is, what's the purpose of government? Um, government uh, is, to me, to my mind, uh, a, a good use of government is to incentivize good behavior and disincentivize bad behavior. Now we can argue about what good and bad behavior consists of, but I, th I think it might be useful to consider throwing throwing in into this plan s somewhere the the term high road behavior, whether it's high road economic development or high road something else. But um, you know, the, when government, uh, I think we would all agree that we want to incentivize responsible behavior, and I just think along with sustainability and all these other uh, somewhat trendy words, maybe. Uh, you might consider uh, the, the use of the word high road uh, in in describing the way we we do things and, and in, in way we the way we prescribe uh, behavior. So I just want to add that. Good. Um, if I might ask uh, Nate, you were going to tell us about your homework and summarize your. Uh... This list is getting very long. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for that uh, input, and I will. Uh, have that prepared for our county executive uh, first thing tomorrow morning on the plan. And we'll um, send that to council right away. Um, here are some follow-ups. So the questions that were raised that went unanswered include, can the Economic Development Commission be expanded formally or informally? Um, we would like to bring parties to the Economic Development Commission to answer the question, what can we do to close the gap? And discussed uh, educational institutions or leaders, um, organizations that are part of the economic development infrastructure and ecosystem like Team NEO, businesses, CEOs, 
lot of emphasis on our workforce board, reentry, um, hearing from experts, um, and other institutions like NOACA. Um, it was said that we should use the Mayors and Managers Association to make sure that we're, and, and our colleagues in those cities, to make sure that we're pushing out what our priorities are and creating a feedback loop um, instead of just being a sounding board for uh, airing of grievances. My words. Um, we should consider recommendations for cluster strategies and we should ID those clusters, uh, especially with the input from experts. Um, we should make input. We, the Economic Development Commission, should be making inputs as a commission into the activities that are external to the commission. We, to translate that, that we should be making statements around what workforce should be doing or um, what we should be measuring as a region or what the Economic Development Commission says should be um, contributor, should be contributing to the efforts of Team NEO or to the RECs uh, next phase. We should set goals, make a statement, answer the question, what jobs did we create? We have to determine what to measure and we'll perform to it. Of course, we have to fill the vacancy and asset inventory. So here's what I propose for our next um, meeting. Our next meeting agenda will be one, to fill the vacancy. So um, our recommendations should be advanced to uh, the county executive or our economic development committee chairman, Jack Schron. Um, I'll gladly take it for them. <laughs> um, we will need to determine whom else we should engage. And so my work will be to propose a list um, that we can wade through and wade through in advance, um, but as a discussion point of who, want, who we want to have on our agenda. Um, we'll have to, we'll present a determination about whether or not we have the ability to expand formally, and we'll discuss whether that should be done informally. We will, I will propose a set of measures and goals that the board can discuss so that we can determine what we will set our goals so that at the following meeting we can start to discuss the path. Once we know our destination, we can define our path. Our goals will be our destination. Subsequent meetings will be about our path. Um, we talked about facilitating those kinds of conversations, having a facilitator, having good input, um, and what strategies we want to impact. I have a crystal ball, it's a small one, so you can't see it here, but it, it is telling me that we're gonna be emphasizing workforce. <laughs> and so I'm gonna to start to prepare that stage, or set the stage for that too. So that's what our next agenda is. I've got some homework to make sure that um, uh, the commissioners are satisfied in advance of that. Is there anything that I missed or should be included? Take that opportunity and then, of course, afterwards I'm always available. Brian. This is, uh, but you did a great job summarizing. This is a, a comment maybe on the plan a little bit. I like the squares and how the departments are now overlaid in economic development. A couple of times in your comments, you mentioned measuring the jobs that we created. And I think we um, there's some balance there that you might think about prioritizing between the jobs we're creating or the demand that we're filling. And the two might be different where we're creating new demand versus filling existing demand. And so I think just some thought about how those things balance out. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Good summary, good presentation. Um, since this is a public meeting, uh, is there any public comment? Oh, uh, not public comments, not, not but public. additional comments. It's, well, I just didn't want to close. I, I, I sense the gavel is getting ready to close. The gavel um, is getting ready, yes. But, uh, what we've done in, on the county council side is we've had a first reading of this document uh, for it. It went to committee, uh, again, in a preliminary overview uh, condition. My assumption is, uh, is that based on what was presented and discussed today, there will be some changes to this, uh, th this, this document of which uh, this co commission Structurally, based on charter needs to, and I don't want to be the law director, I don't see one here, but uh, we need to vote this out of this commission so it gets 
uh, in a condition so that the council can can actually vote it out one way or the other day up up or down so I, my suggestion would be either we're going to have a special meeting or we vote this out with the expectation that this this will have some changes to it so that we can then amend the document that's before council with whatever whatever changes so that's just my 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 reading of what what this this commission has to vote something out and this is a, this is the only time we're going to meet i believe sure mr chair um one of the things that we i talked about with the our law department after the county council committee meeting was that we would resubmit the plan with additional consultation from the commission so um this way County Council isn't limited to a 60-day clock that starts back on June 1st, but we'll get a resubmission of the plan. Um, well, Nate, why don't we, I mean, if anybody, uh, uh, Jack, be, is, do you want to move? I'd be willing we, to move with the expectation that we're going to see some of the adoption of comments from this, this panel be incorporated into that uh, uh, amended plan that would come before Council. Is there a second? Seconded by Mayor Drucker. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye, aye. Any opposed? Passes, thank you. I think that's a good way to go. No, no, thank you. Um, we indicated we would get people out by 11.30, and we are three minutes ahead of schedule, so uh, if it's okay, I move to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Brian Hall. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. And I truly appreciate your time. I know you're all busy people and appreciate your, your uh, advice and input.